So not surprisingly, we had a lot of questions about uh, tooling during our little seminar that Mark and I did. Um, people were were concerned about the cost of tooling for, for shapers. Um, they had heard, as many people do, that, that they require a lot of and uh, a lot of very expensive tooling in order to get anything done. And they were pleasantly surprised to learn at some of the other different options that we talked about earlier. But a lot of people were really interested in uh, a combination head by Whitehill Tools that I had there on, on display. And uh, a lot of people asked, uh, asked questions about that. So I thought I'd um, throw into this video a more detailed discussion of, of that cutter head. So let's take a closer look. Okay, this is the combi head I had on display at the festival that people were really interested in. Um, they have a few different uh, versions of this, but I'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, it's called a combi head because uh, in one hand it does a number of different features. I think it's a great investment um, for a small shop owner that can't justify investing a lot of money in tooling because with this one head um, you can do a lot of the, the, the most common things that you would do with a, with a shaper, especially in a small shop. We talked earlier about how even though high speed still lasts forever in a shaper head, for those operations that you do a lot of, especially in really abrasive uh, material or man-made material such as uh, plywood or, or MDF, you may want to invest in, in uh, a carbide head. The head that I use most often is actually a rebate block um, and this head actually functions um, as a rebate block. You notice it has two carbide cutters, one on each side. Uh, these cutters are reversible. Um, in you know, I've I've used this for probably three years now, and um, in all kinds of different materials, and I haven't had to change the knives yet. They just they just uh, they just seem to last forever. But what's really nice about it, um, if you notice, it's on a slight angle. It's what they call a shear angle. What that does is um, that that helps make make the cut a lot cleaner um, especially if you have uh, you know reversing grain or or something like that um, also on on both top and bottom of this head you have these little carbide knickers and what they help to do is uh, is make sure that the corners of any rebate that you cut are really nice crisp and clean now I use mine for a lot more than just rebates um, I also use it with the appropriate sized uh, bearing on top or bottom for pattern milling or some people call it template milling and with an outboard fence I actually even use it for um, milling boards to uh, to final width it's uh, safer and a lot cleaner than uh, on a cabinet saw it doesn't take very long to set up at all so one last characteristic of this head that people are really interested in that I want to talk a little bit about you notice that unlike the other cutter heads uh, that I've shown this has a small recessed area in the top. Now this is so that the block can be mounted on a stub arbor in such a way that the nut does not project above the block. With nothing in the way, that means that any wood that's not being cut by the block can pass right over the top. Now this allows the block to make um, full length tenons, actually of any length you want, in uh, interior and exterior doors. You can use this with just the rebate cutters to make uh, square shoulders on your uh, on your tenants for mission style doors or doors where the, the molding is going to be applied or you can insert the appropriate cutters and limiters uh, into the head and scribe the shoulders to match the molding that you've milled on your styles or your sticking. Whitehill sells a whole bunch of different uh, match sets for the scribe and mold or the cope and stick as they call it in North America or what you can also do is you can um, you can mill one, the molding in one side and leave the other side uh, for, for an applied molding. That's great for exterior doors where you can have um, say the more weather tight milled molding on the outside and do the applied molding on the inside which simplifies replacing the panels if you ever have to or, or the glass if it breaks. Now I'll put this together really quickly just to show you. You may be concerned um, that you don't have a star barber like this. This is the star barber for my larger Watkin EQ spindle molder. Um, but you can always have one made for your shaper if this is an operation that you think it, uh, you'll end up doing a fair amount. So you may need a couple of shims under there to get it perfect. But once this is fastened down and you've got everything set up properly, you see that the nut does not project above the top of the cutter head. Now, Whitehill sells a few different versions of, uh, of this head, like I said. 
This is the, the larger option. It's 125 millimeters in diameter and 55 millimeters in height. Um, the other one that they sell is 96 millimeters in, in diameter and 40 millimeters in height. Um, essentially the same features on those two heads, uh, except this is the larger one. It will take six millimeter thick cutters as well as the four millimeter thick cutters, where the smaller diameter one will only take the four millimeter thick cutters. If you think you might be interested in one of these heads, uh, just get in touch with Whitehill. They'll have some questions about the arbor size and the diameter and height of the, of the nut. Now, once I get my uh, larger spindle molder back up and running, um, I'm going to be using this head. And uh, if folks are interested, just uh, send me a comment and uh, maybe I'll shoot a little video footage of it as a, as a bit of a demonstration. Thanks very much, folks, and, uh, and as always, play safe.